What is good, everybody? Today we're reviewing the ringside exclusive WWE Elite From the Vault Series number three. Very iconic set so far in terms of the From the Vault series with series one and two. Both of those sets actually included eight figures in each set, and this series does cut it down to four. Now, as a figure reviewer, that's actually nicer because reviewing that many figures in one sitting is that's a lot, man. But I'm excited about these. You have a few iconic figures here. I've been loving the From the Vault series in this day and era of all these re-release waves that Mattel has given us. This is a set that I think is a mainstay. I really do enjoy it, and there's a lot of good value here. And if you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, of course. But I think the figure that everybody's most excited about has to be the Ringside Exclusive SES re-release CM Punk figure right here, man. One of the most sought-after figures before this re-release. As soon as he came through the curtain at Survivor Series War Games last year, everybody and their mom knew as a WWE action figure collector this this figure would probably be getting the re-release treatment and here it is finally I can't wait for it this is a figure that I've never owned I've never had the privilege of owning it but today I actually get to change that and I actually get to obtain this figure but I love the classic elite one style packaging here CM Punk on the side as you can see all of the handsome faces here but some other staples in this line we do have a re-release of the WrestleMania 25 defining moments Shawn Michaels in the all white there very clean gear never had this figure complete so I'm excited to finally have it complete it has some cool upgrades we have a re-release of WrestleMania 18 Hollywood Hulk Hogan right here. This was in the WrestleMania 39 wave back in the day at WrestleMania 39. However, they're re-releasing it here with updated skin tone, new torso, very much an upgrade here. And then we do have one of the low-key stinkers in the wave. I mean, it's not necessarily a stinker. It's just that we just got two Ultimate Editions of Yokozuna, and now we're getting two Elites of Yokozuna. I don't know, man. It was just a lot. Four different Yokozunas within like six months of each other or something like that, which is just crazy in my opinion but what do I know? Nonetheless, man, that is the full wave here. We're going to unbox these. We're going to take a look at all their details, break down some comparisons, see where they stand. Well, let's shut the hell up here, unbox these figures, and find out what the hell they're all about. So here's from the Vault Series number three out of the packaging. You got the full wave here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Not perfect by any stretch, which we're going to get into, man. But what we're going to do is go figure by figure. And we'll just work our way through each individual figure. And then we will make our way to the end. And then at the end, we're going to rank this set from worst to best or my favorite to my least favorite. Or, you know, yeah, worst to best. We always do it from the bottom to the top. That's how it works, right? So let's get started, man. Let's shut the hell up and get into it. So getting into Straight Edge Society Punk, we're going to start things off with him. I figured everybody would want to see him first. And I'm starting things off with this head sculpt, which I know is in an accessory, but I know that people have been saying it's a little small. I feel like the original was pretty small as well, but I wanted to do this so that we could see what the mask looks like. So you have the mask here. It's got the black and white and the stars. It's pretty cool. I thought, I've always liked this gimmick, man, and this version of Punk was my favorite, honestly, but it looks pretty good on there. I think it fits well and snug, and it looks like a mask over the head sculpt. It would have been cool if they had a sculpted mask and then this option. I think that would have been cool, but I still like it. I think it fits pretty well. A lot of people were saying that it, it didn't work well. I think it works okay. I, you know, I personally don't hate it. I think it looks pretty damn good, to be honest with you. I think all this works pretty well. And then you obviously get the white towel accessory that folds over there, and it is pre-molded, so you can, you know, put this on here, and you can, you know, you can either have the, the mask on or off, but it molds around the head pretty good, so you could use this for other characters as well if you wanted to. And then he also comes with the arm sling, which is very cool. We've seen this before. It's got the blue color white strap. Got even some silver detail in the buckle, which I think is pretty nice, but we have seen this before many times over. I can't remember the last time we got the blue version though I cannot remember and then outside of that he does come with fisted hands that have the black X's which actually look like they were drawn on they don't they're you know they're not as clean or printed on but he does have the drug free tattoos and then we also have the mic holding hands with the black X's and then they also say drug free so no missing tattoos so getting an SES Punk, I'm going to leave the mask on since we already took a look at it without. Well, I guess I could, you know what I'm, yeah, you know what, let's just remove it. Let's remove it. Let's look at him. Colin Farrell looking son of a gun. Kind of looks like my father-in-law at some, in some points a little bit. Piece of shit. Nah, I'm just kidding. But it looks all right, you know. It, I think it, it's okay. It's not the best of all time, but it is a, a classic sculpt. I like how it has a slight shaved head look, but there are some schmutzes on the head sculpt right there. You're getting a lot of black and white on there, which is kind of unfortunate, but we can slide this back on there and then all is uh, it's all better but I, I love the hair on the chest i think it's a very underrated detail i talk about that all the time but the straight edge tattoo looks clean no pepsi or cobra tattoos but all the cat tattoos are crazy because this looks like the old deco and I, I it's hard to explain but there was a point where mattel changed the deco to be a little less saturated or something it looks a little bit more opaque i guess or you know the opacity is not as you know it's not like 100 percent they, they blended it down a little bit and that's what you're getting here but i love the camo shorts or trunks 
trunks. Some of my favorite punk gear ever. You do have the black and white stars there. Got the white tape. Got the white hand tape on the hands. All the tattoos going around. Not fully there, but it looks all good, man. I mean, this is all very clean. And one thing you're going to see in a second that is going to be so nice to talk about, but you have the large knee pads, which I hate. And he does have the SES kick pads with the camo on there. Again, just immaculate gear right here. But with this figure, my favorite thing about the figure is it has a tight waist. All the articulation is very buttery smooth. But look, all of this, it's not on ball joints, okay? But it's still, it doesn't have the kick forward and go back and place things. So you're going to be able to pose this guy around, which I think is very, very good to say about this CM Punk. Well, let's get into some figure comparisons here. And for kind of a one-on-one -on -one comparison, we do have the Supreme AEW Jazz Wears, and these are pretty much the exact same gear for the most part. They're not completely identical, but it's the camo, right? And, you know, I know the Supreme kind of towers over it, and I did do a fix-up on this, but I am going to put SES Punk onto Action Figure Surgery Episode 100. I have an extra one on the way, and we are going to put him on Action Figure Surgery Episode 100, so we'll, we'll update him a little bit there, and that'll be nice, but it is cool to see these up next to each other. I think that... Mattel could you maybe dabble in sculpting on the wrist tape potentially in the future. I think that would be a cool detail to add. Possibly. I, I'm kind of afraid of it because what if it looks like trash or they ruin it or it doesn't look good and then they keep it forever? That could be something there, but it is cool to see these up next to each other. And then for your CM Punk figure comparisons, here's some of the more recent WWE figures that we've gotten from Mattel of CM Punk since his return. We're still waiting on the Mattel Creations return figure, but you have the Ultimate Edition Ringside Exclusive Punk. You have the Elite 113 and the Defining Moments Ringside Collection. Pipe Bomb Punk. And it's just crazy to see all these pumped out in modern day, man. I mean, we're getting some of the best CM Punk figures you've ever seen, and I'm sure they are going to continue to pump him out, especially in 2025. I guarantee we're going to get so many punks that it's going to be ridiculous, so any punk fans should be excited, but it is just so cool to finally have this figure in hand to compare with the rest of our figures, and we are, of course, going to put him on action figure surgery. I'm excited about that. And then we have our re-release of the Defining Moments Shawn Michaels accessories right here. And we have to start things off with the coat. And I've never owned the original, but this one looks much better. I want to say the original one was very shiny. And this one has a very matte look. It looks very good. It's kind of that faux leather material. It feels a lot like the old Undertaker jackets just in white. And this is such a sweet accessory, man. I, I love this. It, it fits so well. It's a nice coat. It's, it's excellent. This is what you want out of these from the vault figures. And originally this thing was great, but I think even the redo, and I don't own that original one. I've owned the figure before, never owned the accessories to it, and this just feels high quality. I want to say that original one had that picnic table feel, but I could be wrong about that. You can let me know if you've owned that figure beforehand, but I love this. This is great, and then we even have his entrance vest. You know, it's like a bronze and white, but it's got the crosses and the wings on there. It's even got the rib connectors there, and it even has the back of the vest. Very nice. It fits the figure well. You know, we saw something similar with the WrestleMania 26 figure. Very, very similar stuff there, but this is very sweet. Very sweet indeed. It looks very clean. They did a good job on all the cloth goods with the Sean. And of course, he comes with his white cowboy hat, which is nice. The only thing I don't like is I don't feel like it fits the head very well. Like, you have this head sculpt here, and it kind of sits on there, and you can press it, and it, I don't know, it's just very stiff when you're pressing it on there. I wish it was a little bit easier, but I guess it does. I mean, it stays on and everything like that. It just is a little bit stiff going on there, but I don't know. It, I, I guess it does work. It works better than I originally thought, or maybe I just couldn't get it on there good, but now it looks nice. Outside of that, you are going to get Mike holding hands, you're going to get a pair of fists, and you know he's got to come with the newly sculpted Ricochet Kawhi Leonard handshaking entrance handshaking style hands. So getting into Shawn Michaels starting off the head sculpt, it is, I mean arguably it's definitely a better head sculpt than we saw on the Defining Moments all those years ago, even though I, I kind of low-key prefer it in certain ways which we'll get into, but this is the basic 100 head sculpt which is a solid head sculpt, they just reused it so many times now that I'm kind of over it, I'd like to see something different at this point, but they did change the head sculpt from the figure, we do have the Daniel Bryan torso. I'm pretty sure he did not have any stomach or chest hair for this matchup. I could be wrong. And I can't remember if he was clean shaven or had a beard. I want to say he had a beard, but I cannot remember off the top of the dome. That escapes me for whatever reason. But you do have the white wrist tape. You have the tattoo on the side there. I'm getting a little bit of sheen on this side of the figure for whatever reason. But you do have the bronze and white pants that look good. All of the deco on here is very good as well. You got Shawn Michaels there. Just a classic figure. It is not pinless or anything, so that is good. It will pose around nicely and everything, which we'll see in a moment. But this 
this figure, just this entire wave, especially Punk in this one, is just kind of like you're in a time warp or something, man. You have a little kick pad boots in there, which are not accurate for Sean, but they always give them to him anyway. You know, it's a different deal there, but it's just something about this is so nostalgic. But as far as posability, he doesn't have any issues, man. He can pick kick forward there. He's got a really good double jointed knee. He can definitely do the sweet chin music and everything like that. So you're not going to have any of that. You know, you're not going to be very, I don't know, frustrated posing this guy around. I think if you want to use this Shawn Michaels in any figure photography or a fed or something like that, you're going to like this Shawn. I mean, it's double jointed. It's very nice. We've gotten a lot of pants Shawn Michaels over the last few years since they switched to double jointed. You got the SummerSlam Elite, the Ruthless Aggression Elite, the WrestleMania 26 Elite, the WrestleMania 25 Elite now as a as a re-release in the From the Vault. So you're getting a lot of really good Shawn figures. And, uh, you know, I always said we wanted so many pants Shawn Michaels. Where's the pants Shawn Michaels? Where's all these gears? They've, you know, slowly but surely knocked all those gears out. And then now, since they waited, we actually get them in double jointed form. So that's always good. Before your Shawn Michaels figure comparisons, we have a, quite a few here. You have the From the Vault series number one, the From the Vault series number two, the From the Vault series number three, the original Defining Moments WWE Elite Shawn Michaels, and then the WrestleMania 38, WrestleMania 26 Elite Shawn Michaels. And again, you can kind of see, man, I mean, Shawn Michaels, they re-release him in every single From the Vault so far. I'd like to see the Elite 3 re-release now. And then I think after that, I'm, I think I'd be good on Shawn. Maybe the Network Spotlight would be cool too, maybe. But it's cool to see these. The only big differences I'm seeing between the two, besides the obvious, the head sculpts are different. You're getting double jointed arms. And then the color on the original was more bronzy. This is a lot more brownish gold. The original was more bronze, and it even had like a shimmer to it. It's kind of crazy how good that figure was back in the day. But you are getting a slight difference between these two figures, you know? I mean, there is a little bit of differences here, but it is cool that it's not completely original. You are getting a little bit of slight differences between, you know, that original Defining Moments and this re-release. But I'm sure as hell glad they did re-release it. So for Hollywood Hogan's accessories, you get quite a bit here, just like all your other Hogan figures. You know, he comes with a, a pretty good amount of accessories every time. But no stranger to Hogan figures is we get the Tearaway NWO Hollywood Hulk Hogan shirt that does have the rips in the back as well. So you get the rips in the back and you get the Velcro in the front for you to do the tear there. Would be cool to see them include one that doesn't tear away sometimes, but I'll take it. It's an iconic shirt. We've gotten quite a bit of these over the years. It also comes with the Hollywood weight belt, which this is the old mold, so it's not very good. We do know we're getting a new one with the Legends Target Exclusive Ultimate Edition, but this is the old mold and it's not very good. I can't stand these old belts. They don't have the clip. They don't. They just don't look right, man. They do not look right. I really wish. They need to copy the AEW one, but it does look like the new one is going to, you know, kind of right all these wrongs that we've seen over the years. We also have the Hollywood bandana, which I'm pretty sure this isn't the correct design on the bandana. I'm not a Hollywood Hulk Hogan connoisseur or anything, you know, like other characters, but I have heard that I think this is wrong, but it does fit the figure well and everything. And then we also get the white sunglasses, which fit the figure pretty well. I'd say we've seen these over the, the years. They don't fit as good as I'd like them to, especially with the bandana. But you put them in here, and, you know, they'll stay on there. But then when you add the bandana, it gets a little messy right here. And it, it just gets a little bit difficult right there. You got you got to kind of finagle it and get it in the right spot. But you can make it work with what you will see. It's kind of coming off there, but I guess that gets the job done, right? Now, give me your take on the boa. A lot of people like the plastic. I, for one, would like to see them attempt a cloth good one, but I don't know. The plastic one's just so damn bulky, and you can't really pose it. However, it's not bad, I think, but we do get the white and black boas. They they work okay. I just think that they've ran their course. I think it's time to change course, maybe do something new, and then see if something else sticks. And then for his interchangeable hands, you are going to get mic holding hands. You know you get the fist to beat the hell out of people. And then just like Shawn Michaels, you're going to get the hand-shaking Ricochet Kawhi Leonard entrance-style hands, or the Pumping up the crowd, you know, putting the, the hand to the ear, trying to, you know, get get pumped up. So getting into Hulk Hogan, we do have the yelling head sculpt here with the updated tan and everything like that. And I think this is a good head sculpt. We have seen it over a number of years and everything like that. So it's nothing brand new here, but we do have the newer Elite Torso we saw in the three-pack, which I think looks way better for an old man Hogan. The arms, the shoulders, and everything. One thing we'll get into that I don't like about the articulation we'll get into in a moment, but he does have the white wrist tape and everything. I mean, this is a much better representation than the skinny, ripped-up torso that we saw in that original WrestleMania 39, WrestleMania 18. I hate that I have to double down on that, but it was the WrestleMania 39 wave. It was just based on WrestleMania 18 Hogan, and that's what you have here. You have the same crotch and legs. You have the lightning design going down. It doesn't continue on the crotch there. Hollywood on the butt, obviously. Lightning on the sides there. No white outlines on the knee pads. I really wish we could see that as well, but I do like this knee pad mold for Hogan. You know, it's not oversized. It's not too small. I think it's pretty money. And then some of my favorite boots that he's ever done, and some of my favorite wrestling boots of all time 
is the white and light blue here with the airbrush designs. Such a clean boot. Just such a great boot. I remember watching this event like it was yesterday with my whole family in the living room. I remember it. Man, it's crazy. But then the thing I don't like about the figure is mine has a really loose waist. And I don't know if that's everybody's. If you guys own this figure, if you've already grabbed it and you're sitting there with it while I'm reviewing this figure and you want to compare it, I'd love to know down in the comments section if yours is also loose. But I guess it's just the compatibility with this torso with this crotch maybe. I don't know exactly, but damn, that's annoying, man. I hate a loose waist is is so frustrating. So frustrating. I, I mean, it has to be like loose legs are a terrible issue. Loose shoulders are a terrible issue. Anything that's super loose like that is very, very annoying, I will say. But all your other articulation is going to be fine. It has a really tight joint here and it can kick forward nice. So that's good. You're not having any of that snap back or anything. It's got a good, you know, uh, bendy knee. And I think it is actually pinless. So that's actually shocking that that is the case there. But yeah, I do have a loose waist, but I do want to get it to some figure comparisons here. Now, the thing is, is I did break down that original figure, I think, for a customer fix up that we did for a whatnot stream or something like that. So I don't own that original figure anymore. I just converted it into an ultimate. So I took the original Ultimate Edition Hollywood Hogan here and I swapped the hands and swapped the boots with that WrestleMania figure to give me an Ultimate Edition version. And then this is the re release or the greatest hits version of that original Ultimate, just with updated skin tone and stuff like that. And I didn't switch the boots or anything like that. So this is kind of the updated version that I would, you know, that I, that I would have been cool to see. And it wouldn't shock me if Mattel actually redid this figure in Ultimate Edition form like this, just with the right boots and maybe some slightly different things. But I don't hate this. You know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, this this Elite pretty much, you know, replaced that original Elite. So it's not like it's the biggest deal ever. I just have this original kind of, uh, this is my original now because I wanted to do an ultimate conversion because it was pretty easy to do. So there's that. So for Yoko's accessories, you get cloth goods, and it seems like every single figure here comes with cloth goods outside of SES Punk, but he's SES Punk, so you know, he, he don't give any S, you know, they wanted to, you know, kind of originate the original figure there. Would have been cool if they included an SES shirt or something, or, or a vest of some kind, or something like that, but they didn't do it, and that's okay, I guess. But for this Yoko robe, it is the traditional soft goods here, but it does have the black belt that comes around. It's a giant robe, giant robe that will fit the Yoko figure very well, and it's a good red color, you know, I don't think I hate it in any stretch. It's cloth goods. I don't ever complain about this. If this was rubber, I'd throw it out the, you know, throw it the hell out in the yard, but this looks good. It's long. It's 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 got a good heft to it. It's nice. It's it doesn't have the heft that maybe a, you know, a robe like Oscar or something like that would have, but it's still good material and it, it's nice. I'll never complain about stuff like this. He also includes his bucket, which is something that we've seen so many times over the years. We got it with the Hall of Fame figure. We get it with the I think they've included this bucket every single time with the Okazuna, so we have come to know this more well, but the rope is always sculpted nice and it's a good accessory. And outside of that, you're going to get some mic holding hands. You get fists to beat the hell out of people. And I swear to God, these have become AEW microphones. They include these hands with everybody now. It's crazy. It's the entrance style hands. It's the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard handshaking entrance style hands. So getting into Yoko, starting out with the head sculpt, it's a pissed off Yoko. It's a head sculpt we've seen before, surely. I, I don't, this isn't giving me anything new. I want to say this has been, this has been redone before, so it's nothing crazy like that. One thing I do appreciate about the figure is that it's very mobile, usually with these bigger superstars for whatever reason. They do a really good job of making these big guys movable, but I do like this arm mold. I think that, I I, I like this for Kevin Owens and, and guys like that. I think that this would be a good arm mold to use. I can't tell if it's the Vader arm mold. It looks similar, but it, I, I want to say that it's different slightly. But I would like to see these biceps or a, a similar bicep like this used on Kevin Owens instead of the super jack cut ones like the ones they use on Hogan and stuff. But this is, uh, you know, this is the same way they've made Yoko for a very long time. The upper torso, you get the big waist wrap and everything like that. It's got the big bow on the back, which is a hard, thick piece of plastic. And then he's got his big rump back there with the, with the black tights over it and everything like that. And I can't remember. I want to say that we have seen these tights before, but I could be wrong. The black with the red. I know we've gotten the white wrap with the red tights, the red tights with the black wrap. We've gotten the white with black. And then I remember, I can't remember the Elite 15. If I think this is a re-release of the Elite 15, if I'm not mistaken, but with a different robe, maybe. I can't, I cannot remember off the top of the dome there, but he is, uh, he's a beast, man. He's a mammoth. And again, he's just like very hefty and, you know, you don't get the biggest ab crunch ever, but what do you need that for, I think, with Yoko? But everything else is very buttery smooth and everything, you know, 
legs go out and kick. I mean, he's got a very big thigh rotation there, and he even gets shin cut. If he go down and up, he's get a, he gets an ankle rocker too. He can even do like a super kick. I mean, this guy just feels really good in hand. I like the Yoko figure a lot as far as feel in hand and stuff like that. I just don't know if this release was necessary, I guess, but I don't know. You know, who am I, you know? I just give my opinions, and you can either agree or disagree, build a bridge, get over it, whatever you want to do there, but as far as your comparisons are concerned, I want to bring in the recent Legends Ultimate because they are very, very similar in a lot of ways, and you guys will see there, it's, I mean, it's like inverted colors, and then he has toe articulation, and he has butterfly joints on this figure compared to this one, but I don't know, I just don't think that this Yoko was necessarily necessary because we just got two Ultimates, now we're getting two Elites. If you didn't know, there is a Chase with this Yoko, I didn't get the chase here, but I don't know, man. I, it's just the way I feel. I just don't think that I needed four Yokos that soon, but, you know, who the hell am I? Anyways, man, before we get out of here, I do want to rank these figures from the worst to the best, in my personal opinion, or the ones that I like. And my criteria for the ranking usually goes something like this. It goes excitement level for the figure, execution of the details of the figure, likeness to the character on my television, feel in hand, articulation, accessories could play a part in that, you know. Lots of different criteria for it, but I think that's the basis of my criteria. And this one was pretty tough, I'd say, but it also comes down to, you know, like, which figure do I think I would want? the most or you know if I had to if I had to rank them in order of wantage or which figure would I least want versus most want if I could only pick one out of the set kind of deal but coming down to the bottom I did go with Yoko it just goes down to the other things I like the figure in general I think it's a good gear I think it feels good in hand I think it's executed well it's just I think I'd rather have the other three is kind of where it stands for this Yoko coming in at number three I went with the Hulk Hogan figure you know again I've already had kind of an ultimate conversion of this and everything like that. I don't think that it was the most necessary, but I do appreciate the update. I think it has good things going for it. I hate the loose waist, but it is a good executed Hogan and everything like that. Coming in at number two, I went with Shawn Michaels. This is a figure that I have wanted complete for a very long time. And it's a good execution, man. I mean, he poses well. He looks good. These damn kick pad feet, though, make me want to vomit. I'll throw it the hell out in the yard. Look at that. How's that already loose? I mean, that's ridiculous. But the Shawn Michaels, you know, I, I think I'd rather have that updated Shawn over the other two. And then the number one is kind of obvious. I mean, I don't know how you'd really beat it. That is going to be the CM Punk. It feels a lot better in hand than I was expecting. I was afraid he may have that kick forward problem, especially being made in Vietnam versus the old factory. Kind of had me scared there, but I think it was a good execution. Been waiting on that figure for so long. I think it was such a great inclusion here. And I think overall from the Vault Series 3 is a home run, you know? I, I would... I guess you could do without Yoko or Hogan because I don't think those guys are necessarily from the vault, you know? I think SES, obvious from the vault figure. Defining moment, Shawn Michaels, obviously from the vault. The WrestleMania figure, that WrestleMania Hogan was shelf warming everywhere. You could pick that thing up anywhere, but it was probably because figure wasn't executed well, you know? It had the skinny torso, it had the wrong color and the skin tone. It was one of those things, so maybe he would have fallen off shelves had he been you know, in the right way, but I don't know. I, I can't really tell you because the rock from that set was the one of the better figures of the year, and it shelf warmed everywhere. And you know, sometimes that's just the way of the world there. And then the Yokozuna, I think that there's so many other figures that could have been here. But then again, I don't know. But I'm I'm basing that off of the two recent ultimates we just got. Like, is this figure as sought after as you know? I just don't know if this was necessarily meant to be put here in terms of everything, but I'm sure that Mattel had their reasons for putting it here versus that. Kind of reminds me of them putting LA Knight in the Defining Moments line in that Elite when he was getting a very, very similar ultimate right around the corner, and it was just, why are we doing this when we have an ultimate coming around the corner? It's a better figure, and LA Knight doesn't even belong in the set. It's kind of how I feel about it. I don't know. It's just kind of a strange head scratcher. I'd like to know the reasoning here, and I think there were other figures there, but it's kind of weird that they cut it from eight to four. Maybe they felt like they were getting way too many releases out in this line too quickly to go with all the other re-release waves, especially when you're going after Grails. Maybe they had to cut that back. But I would imagine you're going to see Flash Ray Mysterio in this line eventually. You're probably going to see Halloween Havoc Ray in this line eventually. You're probably going to see some of these other figures be made to be included here. I think that is definitely coming down the line. We'll see, I guess. But I'm excited to see where this line goes, and I'm intrigued with this wave overall. I think if you guys want to grab these, go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. But that is pretty much going to wrap it up for me, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. I appreciate you fellas so much. 
Thank you guys for everything. You guys are unbelievable. Hope everybody out there is having a Merry Christmas as we approach the end of the year. Going to have a lot of top 10 countdowns, top 25 countdowns, best figures, worst figures, the best and worst of everything this year. And we're going to all cover it here on the channel, man. So it should be fun. But I'm getting out, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later. Yeah.